think that the Australian population recognise that there is a need for their, their aid dollar to go towards development, which will assist a country to run by itself and generate its own income and of course have higher economic growth. But as well as that, there are immediate pressing human needs. Figures from a 2005 survey suggested that there were some 3,900 people with disabilities in Kiribati. However, the data gathering methods of the World Health Organization would indicate that the real figure could be three or four times higher, around 15 to 16,000. But no matter what the figures, life for most people with disabilities in Kiribati has meant traveling a long and very difficult rough road. In the past, uh, people with disabilities are always left behind. The challenges that um, we face like people with disabilities, the accessibility, access to everything, access into the infra infrastructure, access to the education, access to social inclusion. And yeah, I think that those are the main uh, issues that we face in Kiribati. To date, there are only limited forms of welfare assistance for families who have members with disabilities. Sometimes these people are either simply neglected as non-contributors or families must cope as best they can. An extreme example is this father on the outer island of Putaritari. His daughter is totally reliant on his care for her every basic need. <laughs> It's always humbling when we meet the kind of sacrifice this father is making for his much-loved daughter, and he has asked his MP to access a wheelchair to lighten the load. Unfortunately, it seems that there may be some kind of delay. Until recently, the main distribution point has been the rehabilitation centre at the hospital. But in one fiery moment in November 2012, this very important facility was burnt to the ground. But the good news is that Australia is supporting the rebuilding of the rehab centre with construction time to start later this year. So each group, as we go around... We recently funded a, a specialist team of uh, two people, one from Australia and one from Fiji, to come here to have a look at the whole range of disability needs here and they're preparing an assessment and a program, a strategic program, for our future involvement in disability activities here. Another area which uh, carries a great deal of stigma here is the, the area of mental health. There's a lot of work to do in Kiribati in terms of mental health. It's for our, um, our vulnerable patients who are actually uh, discriminated in the community and uh, actually looked down upon. For mentally ill patients, they when they are really sick, they often lose these skills, and they're not uh, they keep to themselves. They're not able to, you know, to perform tasks that they normally do. They need to to come back to that to that you know normal normalcy to the normal things that they do, the basic things. Things that we sort of take for granted in our lives that, that we're able to wash, we're able to. Uh, get ourselves dressed in the morning, we're able to communicate, socialise with the people around us. Um, all of these things are really important to a person's recovery. And Marike has done a great job here. She has made a lot of changes, patients are improving and uh, they know what to do, they're attending programs, which is good. I spent quite a lot of time talking and interviewing and um, really trying to get a good understanding of the culture as well because it was all very unfamiliar to me. So well, as I was doing this, I was writing down my thoughts and um, felt that it should be documented. This important foundation research led to the preparation of a comprehensive assessment of mental health needs. This in turn has resulted in recent Australian support to begin upgrading the facility to bring greater comfort, safety and security to patients in their journey to recovery. I believe that if they are on treatment and uh, start treatment early, they will get well and they will get better and they can go back to their normal self quickly.
this 18-year-old young man is profoundly deaf. He very actively contributes to the family, but he has not received one day of formal education in his life. The children who are unable to get to school, the deaf and the blind kids on the outer islands, it's, it's actually a tragedy because some of those kids could be really smart and they could be really useful to their communities. The recent passing of the Inclusive Education Act has been a major turning point. It opens opportunities for many children with disabilities, but it also brings with it a set of challenges. For example, this young man. Kakiaman is obviously very bright and he could be taken to school in his wheelchair. But the belief is that he can't be educated because he can't hold a pen. This challenge is solvable, but it calls on the family, the school and the community to find a solution. It's all about giving him the opportunity. Since her accident at the age of 18, Nate Devata has had to constantly face questions about her abilities as a woman with a disability. I, I, I volunteer. I said, I can go to the outer islands. And they said, they said, no, they just take pity on me because they may, might think that I will fall off the ship or whatever. What they, but I just, I just, I got mad. But I understand that they want to help me. They, they just, but with me, that's a discrimination. So I just said, let me go. I want to go. How can you go? You let me do it. And then I did. And during the travel and the, and the, during those small islets, I have to carry my leg, put it on the, on the canoe, and then jump on after. But I managed to do everything I managed. So my feeling is that I wish that other people with disabilities are being given a chance to prove that they can do something. But although the going may have been hard, we have of late seen a breakthrough in some very important areas. I'm very proud to mention that uh, Kiribati has signed the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Because with this uh, mechanism, uh, it helps the government how to help those people with disabilities. And there's also the National Disability Policy, which is in its final draft. With these successes, the disability community of Kiribati would be the first to recognize the advice and support of various regional bodies. Several of these organizations are in turn supported by Australian aid. And here's another piece of good news. The man we met with the old wheelchair at the beginning, well, now he has a new one. He was one of the last to get one, just before the fire. What did you do? Thank you.